I'm going to show you how to quickly get started with Spectra StoreCycle. StoreCycle is storage management software that identifies inactive data on primary storage, moves it to a perpetual tier, protects it for long-term storage, and makes it easily accessible. Now I've installed StoreCycle here on my Windows 10 computer using the MSI installer file, and now I can access it using the local web interface. So I will enter HTTPS localhost. I will enter the administrator username and the password by default is Spectra. Now we're into the StoreCycle web interface. The first thing we want to do is activate the demo or trial license. So we'll go up to the gear icon under settings and configuration. Click on licenses and SSL certificates. Here we'll click on request beta key. This may later, later say request trial key or request demo key. We'll go ahead and click install to install that and now we'll see that we have a trial key for 60 days. The next thing we want to do is connect our storage, both our sources and our targets. For the purposes of this demonstration, we'll use sources and targets that are located both on this computer. But in a real world, you may have a source that's a NAS storage system, a primary storage system, and a target that is Black Pearl, NAS, or the cloud. This allows, though, for this demonstration to do it quickly and using only local storage. I've created a directory under the C drive, and it's called under the C drive. I've created a directory called StoreCycle. There's a source directory and a target directory. As you would expect, the source is where we will move data from, and the target is where we will move the data to. In the case of the source, I've created a couple of uh, test projects. I've created files with ages of, of various dates, uh, to various uh, times in terms of when it was last accessed. So let's first go ahead and uh, let StoreCycle know about these storage locations. So first we'll go and again to the settings icon and we will click on storage. Then we will pick new storage location. We'll go ahead and identify our source as source 1. We don't need to include a department or a, des a description, though we can do that later. We can enter a cost for the storage so that StoreCycle will calculate a differential in cost, but we'll skip that as well. The storage type we'll be using is non-Spectra NAS. That's what we use when we do local storage. For this first one, we'll be choosing source. And then for the server path, we'll need to enter localhost, and then we'll enter C and then remember we had store cycle and then our folder was called source and we can just confirm that by going to store cycle C store cycle source we will not limit transfer during peak hours that can be done to throttle the amount of scanning and, and uh, data transfer that's done on the source storage we'll go ahead and test that location we get a checkbox indicating that it's fine now we can go ahead and submit that so now we have our source one location. Now we'll go ahead and we'll add our target as well. We'll call that target one. We'll leave the other fields blank. Again, we'll use non spectra NAS as the target. Now this of course is a target, not a source. And again, for the local path, we will enter C, localhost C dollar sign, store cycle, and target. We'll test that location as well. We get the checkbox so everything is set. Now we've got our storage defined, we can go ahead and do a scan. Scans are optional. You can go ahead and migrate data immediately without a scan, but it's sometimes helpful to see what the data looks like in the source storage. So we'll go ahead and do that. We'll click on scan and we'll say new scan. The uh, project is given a default name. We will choose the source for our scan. We can choose a directory within the source, or we can just do the top level directory. Let's go ahead and choose this subdirectory called Research Project 01. You can see that's now populated. We can click on Next. It asks us when to schedule it. We can schedule it now at a time in the future, or we can do it on a recurring basis. We'll go ahead and just choose to Scan right now. I'll click Submit, and we can see that job is running and it should be done very quickly because it's just a small uh, directory with a, a small amount of files. We can see that the job has been uh, completed 
and the uh, files are shown up in a histogram showing the various ages and sizes of the files. This may be useful for determining uh, what you want to migrate. For example, you may only want to archive data that hasn't been accessed in more than two years, for example. We can go ahead now and migrate that data from that directory to the target. We'll go ahead and do that. And we'll choose, remember we were only looking at research project 01, so we're going to say migrate project 01. We'll choose a source for that of source 1. Again, we can choose a directory. We'll go ahead and choose research project 01 for the path. Now we can choose what we want to archive and whether we want to create a new scan or use the last scan. Scans can be uh, uh, intensive, uh, an intensive resource, so we want to limit them. So we'll go ahead and reuse the last scan rather than running a, a new scan on that directory. We can filter uh, based on age and size, age meaning when was the file last accessed. So for example, I may only want to migrate files that haven't been accessed in more than two years, in which case I'm going to archive 2.4 of the 8.4 megabytes. I could also say that I want to only archive files uh, above a certain size, say one megabyte, and now we can see that's again affected how much will be archived uh, in this job. But let's go ahead and migrate everything. We'll choose all ages and all sizes. So we're going to be archiving 8.4 megabytes. We can filter out certain uh, types of directories, filter out certain directories, or exclude certain types of, uh, or include certain types of files. Next, we choose where we want the data to be moved, and obviously we want to move it to that target that we set up. Uh, we could put it to send it to more than one location, so you may want to, example, send it to the cloud as well, or something like that, for extra protection. When the files are removed from the store storage, do we want to leave behind anything? Um, in this option, we would leave behind the HTML link, or we could leave the uh, leave take the files away and leave nothing in their place, or we could keep the files and not remove them at all. We'll go ahead and choose to remove those files with HTML links. We can also add tags, so this is a way for us to find the the, uh, the files later. So we could choose Research 01, for example. Maybe we want to search on that. That might be something useful for the future. Next, we choose when we want to schedule this. Do, again, do we want to do it now? Do we want to do it at a set start time, say Saturday evening? Or do we want it to happen maybe once a month or something like that? This is a, we'll, we'll say this is a, a one-time data migration. So we'll go ahead and say Start Now. We'll click on Submit. And we'll see that the job has started. In fact, it's actually completed already since it was a small amount of files on local storage. Let's take a look and see what happened. If I go to the source and I choose Research Project 01, the files that I had in each of these directories has now been replaced with HTML files, and we'll take a look at those in a minute. On the target, I can see that I now have the Research Project 01 directory, and each of the files has been migrated to that location. You'll see, of course, that the files are kept in their original format and in their original directories. Going back to the source, I may want to restore one of these files, and I can go ahead and use that file as a method to restore. So if I open this HTML link, I'll open a new tab so I can see this. Then I'll drag this HTML link over so that I can see what it looks like. It tells me the file's been archived. It tells me when and where it was archived. I can go ahead and restore that file now if I want to. That will take me into the web interface of the product. Back in, I can say proceed. And I can either log in as my uh, administrator or storage manager account. If I don't have permissions to do restores, I can request uh, of an administrator to have the file restore. But we'll go ahead and log on as the administrator. Again, Spectra for the password and you can see it gets us going with the restore wizard so we can go ahead and search for the file it already has everything populated we can say next gives us a task name uh, where we want to put it we're going to by default it'll go back to the original location you don't have to restore it back to the original location if you don't want to and then it'll ask us when do we want to do it now or at a time in the future we'll go ahead and do it now we'll click submit and we'll see now that file one has been replaced and restored. 
Another way that we can access files and projects for restoration is through the search tool. If I click on the icon, the magnifying glass icon at the top, I can go ahead and search for things by project name, by file name, and by tag. So, for example, by file name, remember we, made, we had a file called uh, file02, and uh, so we'll just do that partial search. If we hit enter, we'll see that, that under that project, it, there's the file right there and so I could go ahead and start the restore process. I can also search by the name of the project that we gave the uh, the migration project and I can re research by tags. Remember we used I believe it was research 01. We click on search and again there's that project so we're able to find that and all the files associated with that and we could restore the whole project or we could go through and select files. That's all there is to it. That's how you set up storage, scan, archive, migrate, and restore in StoreCycle. Thank you.